Hey everybody, I'm J.D. Hoovener, patent attorney and owner here at Bold Patents Law Firm. Uh, welcome to our live show. Uh, we're here every Wednesday, 9 a.m. Pacific and noon on the East Coast. And I'm excited to have a, our live audience here with us. Um, just announced this show earlier today, so we, we'll give people about a minute or so to join in. And during that minute, uh, uh, if you would just uh, join me in a little bit of a happy birthday ukulele play. Uh, I was here last week and I got a good, uh, good amount of laughs and entertainment from uh, my ukulele play. We need someone to sing though, because I'm not gonna sing. So guess this tune, if you know what it is. I learned it on uh, YouTube this morning. The only person I saw that had a you know, famous person with a birthday today was none other than Dr. Phil. So happy birthday, Dr. Phil, and any of those fans out there of, uh, of his work. Um, we have got a pretty uh, action-packed day. Um, I've got a cool set of patents that is related to back to school. And um, I mean, you may have children, you may personally be going back to school. And it's an exciting time. There's a lot of products and uh, things that are new, certainly with, with COVID, uh, with different types of, uh, you know, solutions that are needed for personally protecting uh, you know, against viruses, um, uh, of course, with the, all the new technology as well. So I've got three different uh, inventions to show you. One, a, a unique pencil. Believe it or not, there are still new pencils being developed. Uh, the second is a new virtual classroom, um, which is just invented, just patented just this month and two months ago. Um, and the last one is a backpack. Um, so yeah, there's still new inventions uh, related to backpacks out there. So we'll go through those three as soon as we um, get started here. Uh, I will prioritize live and uh, Q&A. So if anybody's online from our uh, YouTube, our LinkedIn, or Facebook community, and you've got a question, uh, fire away in the comments. I will take that as a priority. Uh, if we don't get any live questions, I will move on to our avo.com questions where I've got a 13 trademarks and one patent question. So I'll just try to do what I can to get through those trademark questions uh, with the time we have allowed. Um, a quick disclaimer, um, I'm an attorney, but uh, I'm not gonna be giving away any legal advice. Okay, I'll talk about patents and uh, share with you some of the fun stuff going on, discuss process, and I can answer hypothetical questions, but I don't want you to uh, be uh, disclosing any confidential information here. This is not um, a legal consultation. But if you believe that after having this maybe meeting with me or after doing some research and you want to move forward and, and start to see if now is the right time to move forward with your invention, I'm giving you a link right there to schedule a free screening session with one of our representatives. And for taking action for doing that, I'm going to give you a copy of this book. It's a free PDF of Bold Ideas, the Inventor's Guide to Patents. And it's going to give you the whole kind of lay of land of what, what patents is all about, what the difference between patents and trademarks is. Um, anything you might need to know in, in between. Uh, so what I'll do is, uh, I'll, without further ado, I'm going to jump right into our, our topic today, which is back to school. I have got, uh, yeah, I've got three patents I want to show you. So I'm going to share my screen uh, with you. So I'm going to take a moment. There we go. All right. Perfect. So this first invention is... Is actually one that was just granted less than a month ago uh, to the inventor Hitsal Kurani. And this is a writing device. This is a writing device. This is so cool. This is, um, if you can picture kind of a James Bond pencil for teachers, professors, this is it. Uh, this pencil pretty much does it all. Uh, I was blown away with how many different functions 
uh, this writing device, this pencil, does. And you can kind of see with that image, and I love going to the drawings, look at that bad boy, the Swiss Army knife of pencils. Mr. Karani, whoops, has really helped us kind of take pencils to the next level. So you can kind of start to see what this thing does. It has a fold-out protractor. It's got a stylus. It's got a mechanical pencil tip. It's got a magnetic closure. And yeah, that is right here. This is actually a projector. So it will project an image of whatever is shown down below. Pretty incredible. Um, now you kind of see some of these other functions uh, and what's involved here with different LEDs. I'm not even sure what a dichronic filter is. Imagine it's multicolors. Um, optics, condenser, light pipe, prisms, optical lenses, uh, imaging systems, microphone, uh, <clears throat> different types of touch sensors. Of course, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled. This is a super pencil. Uh, so believe it or not, this is this is a granted patent. I can imagine this kind of for like you know your entry level or maybe your first you know, college level trigonometry or geometry level class. Let's take a look. Uh, there's a cool image up above. You know how you might actually use it. How it's connected to different computers. I like scrolling down past the written description to see what's claimed here. You know what uh, what the inventor actually owns is listed here at the bottom in the number of set of claims. And so we're down on page 41. Uh, multifunctional writing device comprised. And so all these elements, right, are part of this claim. Okay, it's part of what they own. Meaning if you uh, if you're out there making smart multifunctional writing device and it has all of these elements, all of these things, a hollow body, a first writing member, a second projector, and so on, you will be infringing this patent. Okay. Uh, but it's got the ability to have a mechanical pencil, a drawing tool, compass needle, stylus, eraser, flash drive, imaging system, projector pen, set of cameras, and an attached projector stick. So pretty darn cool. I was looking online to try to see if there was any type of a product like this available to buy, and I couldn't quite find it. Uh, but uh, there it is, patent number 11 million eight. 84,318, congrats to Mr. Kirani. So who needs an upgrade in their pencil? I certainly do. Let's check that out. All right, any live questions on that? Let's see if we have anything back at our, our studio. Nothing yet, all right. Let's jump back over to the next patent. So this one was issued a couple months ago in July of this year, and this one is uh, in, in commerce. So this is uh, Class EDU Incorporated. It's a virtual classroom, um, and they have actually partnered with Zoom uh, to deliver sort of a custom, you know, in-class virtual learning uh, platform. Um, and I was really intrigued by this. I mean, it's, uh, you know, Zoom does a lot. I think a lot of you know, many, many students, teachers, you know, communities have used Zoom and other technologies like that to get together and connect when in-person just doesn't make sense with respect to the coronavirus. Um, but they've taken it to the next level. And so this is a, it's a method of both, not just connecting on the video, but actually allowing uh, assignments, grading, and interaction between the students to happen in the live meeting. So they sort of, in a way, stay online. Right? They stay in this platform, this Zoom-like video, for the whole time but that they're actually teaching. So it isn't just, um, you know, seeing the video only. So I thought that was really neat. Um, they've got some some slides here that I thought were pretty uh, pretty well done to kind of show what this would look like. Let me try to rotate this over. Okay, and I do love the names here too. <clears throat> the teacher is Justin Bieber. Um, but no, uh, so the teacher would be up here, for example, and you'd have, the rest of the class, uh, but there's three students here that are part of a presenting group. And you kind of see who, you know, who's featured on the left, or excuse me, these actually be the teaching assistants. 
but they show different modes and the students there's 49 students and you can kind of see they're in a different panel but it's nice to see you know the teacher would be constantly up there the assistants might be also be up there um, kind of in a college setting and as you can see they can assign give a syllabus kind of go over what's going to happen here's some instructions um, take a poll begin testing launching different products in the in the system interacting with that and um, it seems like they're able to actually you know, answer and ask questions and also provide identification for you know, what type of devices are, are being plugged in with a sort of a live readout on how many people are there. Um, I saw one that sort of showed them presenting. I thought that was pretty unique. Lots of different instances here. Play videos. Yeah, here we go. So you got Ronaldo and Elton John presenting. Teaching assistants are up there, and then the rest of the class. So anyway, very neat, very neat system. And I'll show you briefly where um, where I found them. And so they're online uh, class technologies, and today partnered with Zoom to kind of put together that platform that we sort of looked at in a much more you know, colorful and user-friendly type of position. So that's cool. All right, any other questions on that? Nothing yet. OK, uh, let me show you um, a third invention on back to school. This is a backpack, right? And who thought the backpacks are something you do? And it's true. Almost everything, every product out there can be improved on. And this is just another example of an improvement pattern. This was issued just a month ago, on August 3rd, 2021. Um, and someone thought of this neat idea to include a magnetic back panel. So a lot of you know the back of the backpack is usually sometimes soft and kind of ergonomic, um, but it's got some sort of a cardboard or maybe it's a, kind of a rigid plastic liner. Um, but this is actually a magnetic panel, and that they're sort of using it in two ways. They're sort of creating these cavities. You can see 104. I'll make it. Let's use the bigger picture. Uh, this rectangle area, and then. If, They'll show it a section that's unzipped that it'll create a little cavity, an opening. We can put magnetic objects in there. See that little opening right there? So we keys or maybe containers that are metallic, um, you know, valuable type objects. Of course, you can put your normal books and papers and anything else you may need to carry around your lunch in there, but maybe something more valuable in these inner chambers that would be magnetically attached, um, secured rather in this sort of innermost chamber. I thought that was really neat. Um, the other aspect is that, of course, it's magnetic on both sides. And so on this back panel part, you can attach it to really any metal structure. And uh, other than so funny, this inventor might be, you know, someone who doesn't, you know, who may spend time in the gym, <laughs> you know, hang your bag up, get a couple squats in, and uh, pick up your bag and be on your way. I think it demonstrates a couple of cool things where it can keep the bag off the ground. I mean, a lot of bacteria, a lot of uh, you know, potentially viruses, who knows, it could be on the on the bottom, underside of the bag if it were sitting on the ground. So it's a nice sanitary way um, to secure the bag. And it's not actually hanging, right, on a, on a rod or anything. It's stuck to the to the metal, okay? And I, I, I thought, I mean, why didn't they include something like a locker? You know, a locker would be a great example of just keeping your bag off the ground, uh, maybe while you're doing something else with your hands. Um, you can store things, I mean, you know, protein drinks, you know, your lunch, whatever food you might want to have. It's kind of neat. So it's a magnetic back, backpack, um, and it can be positioned on any, any metal, metal object. Let's take a quick look at the claims. You know, that's pretty nice. And a short claim like this, that's usually a really good sign that it's covering a nice broad subject matter. It's not too specific. Um, so it's got a storage compartment with an inner volume, shoulder straps, back panel having you know, centrally positioned. Uh, along the vertical spline, and one magnetic position of that panel on the, on the central position. So they did have to get kind of specific with respect to what you know, the angle and the position of that magnetic uh, device. But aside from that, I think it's it's going to cover them for almost any type of a backpack, uh, which is neat. So I, I wish them well. And um, again, it was just granted a month ago uh, to Michael McCarthy. So congrats on that. 
And uh, thanks for being a, a part of our show today. So those are the back to school inventions. Um, kind of interesting. It's always fun to, to look at different subject matter. And it's incredible on how much innovation there really is every day. Um, you know, in, in almost every area. So uh, while well, a lot of us are going back to school, um, you know, this is going to be uh, just one of many subjects that we can bring up. So if any of you guys have uh, the topics you want to hear about as we move forward this year, I'd love to hear them and feature it. Um, we want to try to build a live audience and try to get some more participation here um, for sure. So what I'll do is uh, I will open up our awful questions. I don't see any live audience or live questions at the moment. Uh, so here's the first question here that uh, is asked out of Baltimore, Maryland. That was a good one, so I'll put it in the comments here. All right, so how do I patent a weight loss program? I want to protect a weight loss program that I researched myself. I don't want the company that I'm with to use it without giving me credit. Okay, so it's kind of a two-part question. Um, I'll take the first first part, which is you know, eligibility and you know, patent patentability of a weight loss program. And um, I will say that certainly a, a novel, meaning a brand new, first of its kind in the world method, right? Method of, of you know, eating or working out or some way of losing weight. If there's an actual process there, that is patent eligible, absolutely. If it's the first time and it's not an obvious change or iteration or version of a different workout plan that's come before it that's been published. It's eligible. And a weight loss program is certainly part of that, that spectrum of a, of a method, a yeah, method of now, I will say that, you know, it's probably gonna be worth your time to think hard about whether you wanna go down the path of seeking a patent protection for it. Um, you know, is it gonna be something that's gonna be enforceable, uh, easily detectable, even if you get the patent granted? Is someone, or are you able to tell that someone else is using your patented system, your patented method, um, without uh, without you kind of looking inside and seeing how they're consulting? So that's something to make sure you think uh, think about. Um, the other aspect of a program or where you're doing some sort of a uh, presentation or a package is copyright. Definitely would come into play, right? Any type of writings you have, um, whether it's you know videos, written descriptions. Um, you know, we have a course on, you know, how to you know, use the system or the method of, of losing weight. You want to think about how to protect that using copyright. Uh, that's going to control any our creative artistic expression you have around, you know, this innovative weight loss system. Okay, so the second part of your question is actually about ownership. Okay, and so this comes up a lot. And we like to make sure we have this clear with a lot of our clients that are first time inventors or may not know uh, what they're obligated to do as an employee. Um, so I would take a very close look at your employment agreement. Um, and so some of the, I mean, and this will be, you know, case by case, even state by state evaluation to see if there's any risk that your own, that your employer would own what you've created. And it's kind of a two or three part test. Uh, the big one is, is this invention related to what you do on the job? Right? Do you work for, um, you know, 30, you know, 30, 10 weight loss? Do you work for a you know, weight loss company? Um, is it, you know, do you do consulting for how to you know, lose, lose weight or stay, stay in shape, a fitness type of company? Um, that may be a concern. Uh, the second, perhaps bigger question is, did you develop it uh, as part of what, you know, your boss or employer asked you to do? And, and otherwise, in furtherance of your job or your position. Um, and uh, the last one is, was it developed during hours, right? During when you're being paid uh, to, to work? Right? Did you come up with this solution on the job? And if you did, right, and it's related to what you're doing, um, that may lean toward you know the employer actually owning it. And so there are ways to address that. Certainly, with you know a simple contract where they could waive the rights. They say, hey, you know, as long as you do your job that we're paying you for, you can own this you know interesting idea on your own independently. And there may be a simple way to do that via contract. Uh, that will be a specific question, and we want to make sure you work closely with an attorney. Uh, to draft that contract up. Okay, well, I'll put that question aside for now, and thank you for that. Uh, we'll do a, one trademark question. I think we're going to close up. Let's take a peek here. So, trademark application questions. 
Right, this one is out of Tucson, Arizona. Okay, and there are food developers. This kind of cool subject matter. Okay, so I'm a food developer and I'm giving free samples at an event. How would I protect myself from someone stealing my logo or brand? I'm a food development developer and I pass out free samples. I haven't become legal yet, although at one point I was. Now, this event is useful. Uh, is this weekend. What if anything can I do to protect my logo if I use it? Uh, I'm thinking I won't, uh, but that's my brand or idea. So hopefully this uh, answer is coming in time and it wasn't just this past weekend, uh, but in any events, um, you know, free samples, um, you know, when you're out there showing off your company, right? And, and who you are and what your, what your logo is, what you want your company to be known for. Um, in a way, you know, you're, you're saying this word, this logo, represents our company's product, right? Our, our company's goods. And I want this to be, you know, the, the symbol. I want your customers to start to get to know this as our quality and represent our, our, our products. And so as soon as you start using that in commerce, even if it's, you know, for free, that's arguably still in the stream of commerce. You're still, you know, asking them to give you feedback or there's some sort of compensation there. Uh, but I will say certainly when you start selling, okay, selling a product uh, and actually getting money for it, that is definitively something you could use to as evidence that you're using that mark in commerce. And that's what the trademark office would be looking for when you try to go register and say, yep, you're the, you're the only one able to use this logo or this mark for your types of goods or services, also call it a classification. Um, so it's kind of a long way of saying it's okay and it's actually good to just start using a logo or mark. Um, to be even wiser, okay, the best case scenario is to actually work with an attorney, a trademark attorney, to conduct a clearance search, right? To make sure that uh, before you just launch, that you're not gonna be stepping on the toes of someone else. I mean, someone else may already have a registration for that type of logo or certainly you know, that type of word that you're trying to be um, you know, make, uh, make us yours. And you may not know it, right? Innocence, unfortunately, is not, uh, does not absolve you of liability. Um, so you've got to make sure you take a look and make sure you're not going to be treading on someone else's mark before you open up. Because uh, it is kind of unfortunate to have to change branding, uh, change your logo after you start. Customers really lose some, you know, faith and trust in you that you're you know, going to be there forever or that you're going to have, um, you know, always be changing, right? Is something else happening? Is your product changing too? So you don't want to have to start out um, with one brand or one logo and, and then have to change later. So uh, be wise, take a look, uh, hire an attorney to, to review that. Certainly bold pass. We happen to do that. We have trademark attorney on staff uh, if you're interested. Okay, cool. Good questions. I'm going to put my information here below so you can get a hold of me personally if you have any questions. And I've got a text only line. You're welcome to text me and I'll get back to you usually within a couple hours at the string business hours. Um, so again, uh, I'm JD Hoover, uh, with bold patents law firm owner here and also patent attorney. I'll be here next week, Wednesday, and we'll talk about another subject here. Have a good day, everybody. And happy going back to school. Bye-bye.